Hello, and thank you for joining me. Israel's relations with Saudi Arabia and Turkey. The war between Israel and Hamas, or more accurately, Israel's war against the Palestinian people is rather inevitably attracting the attention of people who are not only ignorant about the history and politics of West Asia, but who are also devoid of even an ounce of knowledge concerning world history and international relations in general. Those people are only commenting on the fighting between the Israelis and the Palestinians because the media whom they are slaves to, namely Western mainstream media, has made it a story. That Palestinians have been murdered, abused, pillaged, and humiliated by the Israeli state every day since 1948 is something that the people who are now talking about the current round of Israeli-Palestinian fighting are wholly ignorant of. Suffice to say that citing the Balfour Declaration to the aforesaid people will bring about a gormless look on their faces. Even though the Balfour Declaration is at the core of the problem in the Middle East. And let me take this opportunity to say this in relation to the Balfour Declaration. The biblical land of Palestine was neither British land nor Britain's land to give away. The biblical land of Palestine, which not only encompasses the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, but also all of the state of Israel, is the ancient homeland of Jews, Greeks, Armini Armenians, Assyrians, and Arabs. Furthermore, it is lamentable that many Christians, especially evangelicals, confuse biblical Israel with Zionist Israel, when the two are patently not the same. Now, returning to the current fighting between the Israelis and the Palestinians, Western mainstream media, along with its gullible and idiotic audience, is presenting Israel, as it always does, as fighting against Islamist terrorism. How ironic, given that Islamist terrorism, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, are controlled and deployed by the West in pursuit of geostrategic objectives of the Western ruling elites, such as in Bosnia, Lib Libya, and Syria, and indeed Russia, specifically the North Caucasus, Chechnya, Ingushetia, and Dagestan. But staying with Israel, Israel fights neither Al Qaeda nor ISIS and never has. In fact, numerous Israeli officials, including a former Mossad chief, have said publicly on numerous occasions that Israel does not regard either Al-Qaeda or ISIS as an enemy. And let us not forget that neither Al-Qaeda nor ISIS have ever designated Israel as an enemy of theirs. Furthermore, that the Israelis, during the war in Syria, treated wounded Al-Qaeda fighters and then sent them back to continue their fight with the Syrian army, is common knowledge to anyone who is au fait with the politics of the region. That actuality takes us rather appropriately onto Israel's relations with Saudi Arabia and Turkey. For decades, Israel has enjoyed an informal strategic partnership with Saudi Arabia, the latter of which is the preeminent exporter of Islamist terrorism in the world. With Israel constituting the primary conduit for American influence and power in the Middle East, and with Saudi Arabia constituting the secondary conduit for American influence and power in the Middle East, Washington initiated the informal strategic partnership between Tel Aviv and Riyadh, knowing that this would serve to cement American hegemony in the Middle East. 
Now, when Saudi officials such as Mohammed bin Salman condemn Israeli actions against the Palestinians and express support for the Palestinians, this is merely for public consumption, namely to maintain the facade that the Saudis support the Palestinians, to preserve the illusion that Saudi Arabia opposes Israel, and to placate fervent support amongst ordinary Saudis for the Palestinians. The exact same can be said for the Jordanian royal family, whose members in public condemn Israel and proclaim support for the Palestinians. Beware the Jordanian monarchy, which is historically tied to the British monarchy. Finally, the Israeli-Saudi informal strategic partnership plays a major role in strengthening and enriching the Israeli and Saudi ruling elites. If the strategic partnership between Israel and Saudi Arabia is informal, then the strategic partnership between Israel and Turkey is very much formal. The Israeli-Turkish partnership developed over two periods, the formative years, 1948 to 1992, and the golden age, 1992 to 2008. And it was the golden age that gave birth to the Israeli-Turkish strategic partnership, which continues to this day. Now, whilst it is true that the Israeli-Turkish partnership has been strained because of Turkish President Erdogan, it is imperative to know and understand that there are many components in a relationship between two countries. The leaders are an important component, but not necessarily a crucial one. There are economic components, military components, and intelligence components, all of which are essential and can withstand a situation where there is tension between two leaders whose countries are in a relationship with one another. It is for those reasons as to why the Israeli-Turkish strategic partnership remains intact, notwithstanding the actions of Erdogan. So, for instance, military and intelligence ties between Israel and Turkey are one of the most embedded and active in the region and extend to the contested territory of Nagorno-Karabakh, in which the Israelis and the Turks have collaborated with each other to assist the Azerbaijanis against the Armenians. It should be known that Israel has aligned itself with Azerbaijan so, it, so that it can use the Muslim country to spy on Iran, the arch enemy of the Israelis. Further to that, the Israeli-Turkish strategic partnership involves the Israelis and the Turks working together to deny the Armenian genocide and undermine efforts in the world to discuss and commemorate this heinous act of genocide, which was committed by the Turks during the Great War. Finally, I would like to comment on the pro-Palestine marches which have taken place in the Western world in recent weeks. Some of the participants in the aforesaid marches are Islamists who support putrid terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Those people are not bona fide supporters of the Palestinian people. Rather, they have attached themselves to the Palestinian cause so that they can advance their cancerous ideology Islamism. And let us not forget that Islamist terrorism is one of the West's most potent of weapons, a weapon which has shed the blood of countless numbers of Christians and Muslims alike, along with many others. Thus, I urge people to make a distinction between the Palestinian people, some of whom are Christian, and Islamists who are contaminating the cause of Palestine. Thank you very much, as always, for listening.